Queenscliff, which is a small council in Victoria, has been slammed for spending thousands of its ratepayers' hard-earned money to fly in, yes, campaign panellists to speak at its Pro Voice event. And they're not the only ones. We'll talk lots to talk about. Local residents asked the council to invite a member of the No campaign for balance, but they refused. For more on this, we are joined first time here on Outsiders, Liberal Senator Sarah Henderson. Sarah, great to see you. How are you? Welcome to the show. Rowan, it is really wonderful to join you. Thank you for having me. No, our pleasure. Now, what, what, what's going on with these Victorian councils? So they don't understand the basic principle of democracy or of a referendum that there are two sides to the <laughs> debates. Well, it seems not. And this is a really shocking misuse of ratepayers' money, Rowan, uh, in Queenscliff, where, of course, I asked to present the merits of the no case um, the, you know, the no case being unknown, permanent, divisive and, of course, the secret mission to implement a treaty and possible compensation that we now know about uh, from this uh, deceptive government. Uh, but, of course, the council said no and so now they're spending thousands of dollars, including flying down Kerry O'Brien from Sydney oh, to help. speak at this so-called community com conversation, which... Uh, is all about furthering the yes case. It's an absolute disgrace. And uh, and I have called on the council to refund these monies. Perhaps the yes campaign should pay these costs, or the mayor, but certainly not the ratepayers. Rita. Well, I'm looking at the costs here, Sarah. $1,700. I fly between Melbourne and Sydney. It doesn't cost $1,700 <laughs> for Kerry O'Brien, unless, I don't know, he's maybe in the pointy end of pointy the plane. Pointy end for Kerry. But uh, we'll, we'll get to the bottom of that. We don't know if he's an economy or not. But this seems astonishing, given the amount of money the Yes campaign has. We know they've got a massive sum of money. They've got all the corporate support. And so why the ratepayers paying this money to, to fly in Sydney-based voice advocates? Well, it's really disgusting, and I think this is furthering the personal political views of the mayor and some councillors. I might say not Councillor Donny Grigo, who is a former Liberal candidate. Uh, he has objected vehemently to the expenditure of this money, but it really is shocking and no wonder the ratepayers and some of the ratepayers are saying this is disgraceful. I believe there will be a protest there this afternoon. I'm very much hoping, Rita, that everyone will come along to my forum with Warren Mundine, which is putting forward the no case at the Geelong West Town Hall this coming Thursday Fantastic. at 5.30 mm. and people can go onto my Facebook page to look at that. But, but really, this is an affront to democracy. This is an appalling abuse of ratepayers' funds. Uh, and the ratepayers of Queenscliff and Point Lonsdale should not be paying this money. James. Sir, I want to shift gears here and talk about a story that we had uh, in the Daily Telegraph this week about the Albanese government. And, you know, they're all very much about yes, and the treaty, or the, the voice rather, is going to improve outcomes for Aboriginal education. And yet, the report here was that they have axed plans to build two remote boarding schools for remote Indigenous kids. Would have been about 150 kids, I think, in WA and the Northern Territory. This is real practical, not symbolic improvement of outcomes for Aboriginal kids. Your government pledged this, and now Labor has decided to ax it. Tell us about it. Well, James, this is uh, appalling. We fully funded the construction of four boarding schools, three to be rebuilt, uh, one to be rebuilt, and three to be built um, from scratch. And in the budget, and, and of course, as we revealed in Senate estimates, uh, the government is scrapping the construction of two of these boarding schools, some of the most disadvantaged Indigenous students in the country. So what an irony. The Prime Minister goes to the Gama Festival, spruiks what he's doing for Indigenous children, giving them a better life, better opportunity, better education. And just up the road, in East Arnhem Land, the government is axing the construction of a boarding school which would fundamentally transform the lives of young Indigenous students 
students, including uh, a situation where they don't have to travel hours a day to go to school. So this would lift attendance rates and also make sure that they can go to school in a safe and stable environment. It was a hallmark coalition policy. And it, it's just another example, James, of the hypocrisy of this government. They talk the big talk on The Voice, and yet when it comes to delivering for Indigenous students in schools, they are failing. Here, here. Well said, Sarah. And absolutely calling out Labor's hypocrisy on that is just staggering. If The Voice did get up, you can imagine the hypocrisy would be on steroids. On the same topic or related to what we were talking about with the councils, it's not only the councils, Sarah, there's a school, I know it's not in your, elect in your electorate, but it's in, in uh, or I don't think it is, it's in uh, Victoria, uh, the King's, King David School, very good school, um, Jewish school there, uh, they are having an event which is a community education event it's described as. Uh, David Adler referred to it as a community propaganda event. They're having a voice to parliament session for the school kids, but only yes speakers are speaking. Uh, one of the, some of the kids apparently did ask if there would be a no speaker and were, no, they were politely just dismissed. Um, what do you make of this, Sarah? Well, I think this is terrible because the classroom is for education, not indoctrination. So if uh, a school is going to teach children about the referendum, they need to understand both sides of the case. And in fact, I'm taking Warren Mundine to two schools in Geelong this week who have welcomed the opportunity to hear from Warren about the merits of the no case. But I know that there are other schools which are actively campaigning for the yes case. And frankly, as the Shadow Education Minister Rowan, they are failing students. Students should be given all relevant information, allow them to make up their own minds, allow them to understand all of the arguments. So I think schools are really failing students if they're not giving them all the information.